Hello, everybody. <laughs> so, if we have a look at these then, folks. What do we think? <laughs> Absolutely. You could, could use them as rolling pins, of course. Hood. Now, the problem was, of course, it's hard to try and push them in. And especially if this has been covered in tar, you get a real problem. So, what you use then is this. Which you said, say, you thought might be bread. So, you've got now. Grind, yeah, it's good. You could grind things with it. But what it was, it was mainly used for this. You push it through your rope. So, you don't turn your fingers. And it leaves you a nice hole. A nice rolling pin size hole. Then you can put that in. And then like that. And as you so rightly said, folks. That's a rope. <laughs> yeah. Rope ladder. Sure. Rope ladder. No way. Because imagine really handy on a ship. Different lengths. Different ways to climb up to. It's okay. Just make that is cool. Yeah. And the other mm. thing, of course, which is really important, if a ship got attacked, which they regularly used to get attacked, you could just people just start jumping over the side. Then you needed something to protect yourself. You didn't always have something to hand. You could go to your rope ladder, pull it out. Not a rolling pin. Not a ladder step. But Smash. <laughs> yeah, boys, we're into fashion win. Smashing, 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 smashing. You should be doing more shit, man. You should be doing more shit. So this is well then, folks. When you see, it's also like a natural flow. And 200 years ago, when they wanted people to join the navy, they didn't say you get to see the world and we give you lots of money and you get three holidays. What they said was, would you like to join the navy? If you said no, they bashed you on the head with one of these and you joined anyway. No way. It was known as press gang. Unofficially did that because it was the same thing. The law at the time, the Impressment Act said if the Navy didn't have enough people, you could take them by force. So this was the force. Jesus. They weren't allowed to carry swords or guns because you weren't supposed to damage the people you were recruiting. Yeah. Like this wouldn't come. Yeah, it looks, yeah, I was going to say, yeah, it looks like that might damage you just a little yeah. bit. <laughs> so once you're in the Navy then, folks, this was part of the food. What's that? Right, I'll come and show you and you can have a guess. So it's basically rice. That looks disgusting. What is that? Hey, it's stew. Looks like a bucket of fat. Yeah. <laughs> That's so nasty, isn't it, that? <laughs> I don't know what that is. Very good, very, very good. Yeah, this lady beneath me, she, I think she knew what it was. I don't know what it is. <laughs> Pickled cabbage. <laughs> Is that what it was? Yeah, yeah because um, it had a high vitamin C content. Right. All right, yeah, of course. Yeah. No so way, pickled cabbage. cabbage. Yeah. You definitely paid attention to school, didn't you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> pickled cabbage. That's what it is, folks. Pickled cabbage. In fact, pickled is a little bit of a misnomer because salt. what it is, it's salt. Yeah. You put salt in with cabbage, it makes an acid. And then this lasts a long time. The other thing, if you didn't have enough fresh fruit and vegetables, then you've got a really nasty disease called scurvy, where your teeth fell out, your skin went all horrible and wrinkly. So they didn't know about vitamin C, it hadn't been discovered. They just knew if you'd add lime juice, lemon juice, or this, then that would stop scurvy. So the other lemons and limes are really well known, this is not. So, one of the most famous explorers <laughs> from <tasty>. nearby, <laughs> Captain James Cook, he was advised to serve his people this. And initially, on the first voyage, when he had it served, everybody entered and said it was horrible, but then wouldn't eat it anymore. So, for the second voyage, Captain Cook didn't give up. He had the barrels, when the barrels came aboard, he had them marked for officers' use only. 
So officers always got nicer food, of course. So then the men said, why can't we have that? Why is it only for officers? And he said, all right, we can. <laughs> and then after that, everybody loved the soldier. Ah, Captain so Cook was a clever man. man. Yeah. <laughs> That's ever so clever. So the other one then, Bob, is... I've never seen him so fascinated. He's loving it. So, that's got a nice little arrow on, carved on. Oh yeah, biscuits, ship biscuits. Exactly. Ship's biscuits, folks. So, now they look quite nice. They look a bit like cookies, but same shape, but that's where the similarity ends, because these are two-thirds flour and one-third salt. And that's it. No oh. fruit, no chocolate chips, no nothing. Oh. Far, far too much salt and baked for about 20 hours. Because you didn't have biscuit tins, of course, on ships. You had to put them in a barrel, they had to last a long time. You had the creatures which used to eat them, you didn't want them to eat. So that's why they were baked for so long. You got about a pound and a half of these per day. And how they used to test them was the baker, after he'd done them, he would take them outside and say, we'll say the biscuits are done, and then he would go like that. And so these are real biscuits, folks. These are not made of plastic or wood. No way, did you they're hear them? They're real? They're about five years old, which is fairly fresh. <laughs> for a ship's biscuit. <laughs> So you see, when they've bounced off the pavement and they're undamaged, then they're great for seven for sailors for breakfast. That's what's damaged the slabs. <laughs> I, did, I, I threw them down once and a seagull came and tried to take one and then spat it back out. <laughs> well, you know it's like. Yeah, yeah. They were, Jesus. So, <clears throat> one of the things, and this is a true recorded story, there was a ship going back from Gibraltar and it got a hole in the side. They didn't have any wood to repair it. What they found was two sacks of ship's biscuits. You can see where this is leading. What they did is pushed the sacks into the hole that swelled up and then stopped the ship from the sea. No way. So they could, they could save your life. No way. In that hole. Exactly. What's that? So this then folks. What's that? So what's that got to do with ships, do we think? Anchor point. You could use it as that, or well, possibly even as a candle holder if you wanted to. Yeah, but, okay. but it was, it had a specific use. And sometimes, often on films, when you see them scrubbing the decks, they're using scrubbing brushes, which they didn't. They used to use these. So it's known as a holy stone. It's sandstone, so when you're pushing it backwards and forwards, lots of sailors then didn't wear any shoes, they didn't have any shoes. You didn't want the deck to be rough, you didn't want it to be slippy as well with seaweed and algae. So if you push this backwards and forwards, then you get a nice clean deck. But it's quite hard to use as well. And why it was called the Holy Stone, a couple of reasons. One, lots of captains used to get the decks washed on Sundays. That was part of the duty. And the other one is you can you can use it standing up with a, a piece of wood, but the best way is if you're kneeling down, it's pushing back and forth. So all the crew were kneeling down, scrubbing the decks, so it made them work. But the best best answer I ever had, the little boy was four, and I said, Why is it called the Holy Stone? And he said, Because it's got a hole. <laughs> No way, they used to clean the decks with that YouTube. Cannonball. So this one then folks, this is a cannonball, but an unusual cannonball. It opens by the looks of it. You wanted to capture a ship, when the best way was to capture a ship, because if you brought it back to England, then you could get paid for it. You got prize money. So it's no good singing and saying, oh, there was this really nice ship, but we sank it. If you can catch it and bring it back, then you get lots of money. So the problem was, what you had to do is to cut the ropes 
cut those ropes or to cut the sails down as well. Therefore, that's the only source of power the ship can escape. Oh, is this the that the chains are attached to? If you're trying to hit a piece of rope like that with a cannonball, really difficult. So you used a special cannonball like this. So when you fired it, it went like that. Yeah, it is the chains. I knew it. So it's called expanding chain shot. Yeah, I knew it changed. And me. you can see anything that's fired out will spin, naturally spin. It wrap around the ropes, cut them down, and then some the wind. So the most successful one was when a British frigate, two British frigates captured uh, two Spanish treasure ships when we were at war with Spain at one point using this. And <coughs> there was so much gold and silver aboard. When they came back and all the money was divided up, normally the captains would get the most money, but there was so much money the captains decided to spread it out amongst everybody, and there was 200 on each crew. So after they sold the gold and divided up the money, this, each sailor got the equivalent of 35 years of wages. Fucking day. Jesus. Jesus. So this could be very, very good. That's a good day's pay, isn't it? <laughs> I wonder how many of them had it left after a week and a half. You could leave the Navy then. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus, 35 years, mate. In one day. Uh, you've got to wrap the same. So, if you have a look at this one. That's a cotton, isn't it? Someone's asleep in a hammock. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I think so. So, I think everybody, we all know what it is. Hammock. Very good. Go. Absolutely. I think that it. So originally I when it. when the Navy was first established, King Henry VIII, he established the Royal Navy and they had just had normal beds, nobody thought about it. Nobody well, thought about the ship would rock. Oh, if you lying in a normal bed, you would fall out. So very, very good this guy, isn't it? Um, eventually the after visiting different islands, found out this was a really good method because you can string it up. There's lots of hooks on the ship, as you probably see. So you can string it up. It will rock when the ship rocks. Really comfortable for you. So and it had lots and lots. So what they used to do is to get your space back because it was above where you used to eat. So to get the get the space back during the day, what you would do is roll it up and then put it in. You can see the, the nets at the side, that was all full of rolling hammocks. So that was a really good place. If you, if you were getting fired upon, if you hit behind there, you can imagine it's going to hit these and not you. So that was the safest bit. So also what they used to do then is, if you died at sea, then you would be sewn up in your hammock. Traditionally you were buried at sea in one of these. So what they would do, place a cannonball at your feet, sew it up. Traditionally, the last stitch would go through your nose to make sure, and then you would drop it over. They'd say the prayers and you, get, you got dropped over. So you can see then, folks, this one's number 23. All hammocks had a number because hundreds of men on a ship, you wanted your own hammock, you didn't want anybody else's smelly feet in your hammock, you wanted your own smelly feet in your hammock, so they all had numbers. So when you were buried at sea, the cannonball made your feet sink first, so your number was up. Oh, no way. Oh, no right. way. There's loads, loads, loads of expressions from the Navy. Yeah. No way. So, Steve, do you want to talk about the... Yeah. Yeah. Right, he's Steve, our boss, folks. <laughs> right, and folks, so Steve, Steve is a bosun who would enforce rules on a ship. I'll, I'll leave him to me, tell you the next there's the man who's going to enforce it if as you do this. As part of my job on board ship as bosun, as well as caring for the rigging and making sure everything was in order that way, was discipline. If you like, I was the ship-born policeman. I was there to make sure that people worked. 
simple thing was, if you weren't working and I was wandering around and you were idly chatting, I would do something like this. This was called a bosun starter. This is a very simple one. Double twist on the end there. I wouldn't tar that so that it was nice and solid. They made them out of baleen, out of wheels, gills, because that would whip. And they would twist them together a little bit like your modern day golf club. It would actually, as you pull it back, it would bend and then lash forward. Oh, I bet where this is just a straightforward rope step. Oh, I bet that fucking The whole idea of oh, this, you're being man. lazy, you just get it straight across the middle of the back. Oh, the shoulders. Man. When you'd be told in broad certain terms that you were being lazy and get on with your work. <laughs> if you went any further, the bit no I was either. looking for, which is missing, um, when you look at the the arms that they had on board, the cannonballs, etc., there's one there that's all made up of little ball barrels. That was something that used to be fired out of the cannon in different forms. Now they could be lying around loose. If I heard you sort of back chatting, muttering under your breath or whatever, I would inform an officer that you're not really happy with your job. And what he would do then, he would find one of these things and he would walk around and he would give it to you. The modern day equivalent of those, and we've all had one, is the gob stopper. It's hard, it's heavy, it's a big metal ball. He would give you that and turn around and say, pop that in your mouth. What? And hold it there. No you way. Got that in your mouth, you can't chat, you can't talk to anybody. No way. But it's there as long as he decides it's going to be there. Damn. So you're wandering around, and as this thing gets heavier and heavier, your hot and jaw starts to sag, so you grip your teeth and you pull it in. And then it'll start to sag again, so you grip your teeth and pull it in. At the end of the period, when he decides he's quite happy with how long you've had it there, he'll tell you to take it out your mouth. Usually at that point, you can't. you've got what you call lock jaw because of the weight that's on your jaw. The only way you're going to get that removed is by going below deck to go see the surgeon, give it the order, and he'll take the front teeth out or break your jaw to release that pressure. So that was one damn thing. Dang. This thing here, it's a wrong bag. I haven't got a correct one. This would be a red velvet bag. And inside this red velvet bag would be the favourite punishment item on board ship. Anybody know where it is? In here. Exactly. You've been there, haven't you? Uh, uh, you, you know all about it. As the gentleman said, it's a cat. It's a cat and nine tails, though. Cat and nine tails. Yeah, cat and nine tails. This was used for general flogging around ship. As a boatswain, it was usually my job to give it. Straightforward, cat and nine tails, because there's nine tails on it. There is a smaller one with six tails, which was used for lesser punishments. But the captain would order punishment with this for just about any reason whatsoever. Now I've got my velvet bag. Here you go, the old saying, letting the cat out of the bag. That's what that is, letting the cat out of the bag. There's a punishment going ahead. You'll be ordered for something anywhere from five upwards to a flogging around the fleet, which would be an all day job and several hundred lashes. You would be taken up onto the upper deck because it's pointless doing it below decks because there ain't enough room to swing a cat. Bar bar, there we go. <laughs> no way. So we'll take it up there. We'll tie you up to one of the gratings and then you would be given the lashes, depending on how many you've been given. So if we can have one volunteer. Yeah, go on, I'll do it. <laughs> Not too hard though. Never happens. <laughs> Never happens. Basically, you'd be given them. If you're given ten lashes, it would be done to a count. It's not just one, two, three, four, five. You'd be told to laugh. You step forward and you swing. Simple as that. At the end of each of these, it's got to call a blood knot. Blood knot will cause you the damage. It causes the cuts across your back or the lacerations. We don't want to kill you. You could be an important man. You could be a top man working up there. All we want to do is teach you a lesson stop you from doing whatever it was you did. Gruesome, everyone. Gruesome. The who was you know, a little bit more thoughtful would take on two bosons, one left-handed and one right. He would then split the punishment between them. So if you had ten lashes coming to you, the right-handed one would give you five, the left-handed one would give you five. Mm. 
Instead of those nice wheels across your back, you get a checkerboard pattern that you make some play chess on for a couple of weeks. Really nice people. So that's that one. And what we don't have anything for, but it was a daft punishment. If you were caught stealing, it was a heinous crime on board. So everybody got the chance to punish you. And what they used to do was a thing called running the gauntlet. You would be all up on up on the upper deck for the punishment, and you would be in two lines. You would have things similar to this, you would have bits of wood, you would have anything that you could get hold of that could cause some sort of damage. Whoever had been caught stealing, his punishment then is to walk between those two lines and get a good wallop on it. Buddy has his hands tied behind his back so he can't protect himself, and it's done to the beat of a drum. So you take one step to each beat. To make sure you don't walk faster, or try to get out the way, you have a marine in front of you and a marine behind you. They have their rifles with their bayonets on, one there walking backwards, one in the middle of your back walking behind you. So you can't get You're going to get that. So, if anybody wants to know any more, please put a window through, kick somebody. Ah, <laughs> 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 thank you. Thank you very much, man. That was cool.